Hello and welcome to this episode of Microchips and on the bench today we have this customer's radio this has been um, sent to me for modification so we're going to do a quick video about this but before we start don't forget to like, share, subscribe, comment, join Facebook, join Patreon, buy me coffee, have a look at my website microchips.net and let's get started. Now for you eagle eyed people out there you may notice it's got a custom decal on it not to my um, taste unfortunately but you know anyway we've just got the radio on we're just going to make sure that it's behaving itself before we um, do anything to it and we've got a nice four watts output and um, swinging the meter over on SSB and we've got four bands we've got low bit high and UK FM and everything seems to be quite normal on this no problem at all yep absolutely fine no trouble at all so let's get to the modifications So inside, no horror stories, so that's nice to see. We do have a modification board here, but unfortunately that's going to have to come out to make way for the uh, DDS kit that the customer wants fitting inside this. But no horror stories on the component side, let's have a look at the circuit board side. Absolutely no horror stories there. Only one little cut track with that resistor on it. So that's not too bad at all. Looks like a well kept um, Superstar 360. Uh, 010AB chassis. The 2SA1012's not been changed. So that's got Rubicon caps in, and it's also got that horrible glue that likes to corrode stuff so we're going to be getting rid of that corrosive glue and we're going to be doing some regulator upgrades so for a start let's get these thousand mics out and get rid of that nasty glue that seems to be close by so using our trusty desoldering gun makes some um, short work of those capacitors and whilst we're in there we're going to pull the 2SA1012 out of there which actually looks like it's been previously worked on so out with a 1012 out with the transistor that drives the 1012 so that can come out and out with this resistor that can cause SSB issues so as you can see there's our 1012 and it looks like it's had a, a makeshift leg soldered to it We'll take that out and we'll pull this small resistor out and we're going to replace those. Now let's get these thousand mics out. I'm sure the capacitors are absolutely fine. But we'll change them whilst we're there anyway. So using a bit of alcohol and a scraper, I've managed to get rid of all that nasty corrosive glue and as you can see where the glue has touched this jumper it has actually started corroding that away so yeah I think it was a good call in getting rid of that glue so we've got our two new capacitors in place let's solder those in Somebody made a comment on one of my videos, could I do a soldering tutorial and where did I learn to solder? 
well, I've been soldering for quite a long time and nobody really taught me until I went to college for um, learning, well, to get qualifications on, on repair. For all you um, old TV guys there, that will be the 224 City and Guilds. And I did have some soldering in there. So we've put a nice new insulating um, sheet in there for our new um, regulator, which replaces the 2SA1012. And we'll put in the, the driver for that transistor, just like so. And then we will solder those into place. There we go. That's the main regulator soldered in. So now we will do its driver. Very nice. And we'll snip off the excess. And last component to fit is the replacement resistor that we um, took out before. And that just goes into there. Just like so. And we'll solder this into place as well. Okay, so this modification board will have to come out. I'm sorry whoever put it in there, but it's going to have to come out. And just out of interest, let's see whether whoever has done this has sanded the number off the pick chip. And yes. Yes, we've sanded the number off the top. But you know, I don't I don't see why you need to sand the number off the top because if you use code protection then nobody can um read the code from the chip anyway. So there's the um the channel change and the mod board out. I've linked it to channel one. And as you can see, we're um, we're all over the place with a frequency. It starts off on correct four one five and then jumps up to twenty eight. And that was because of a um, a floating pin on the binary adders. You may have noticed a resistor on one of the binary adders, and that was that. So we're going to fit one of my custom display boards. We're going to fit in the DDS board. Just like so. Nice, tidy fit. So we've done some wiring. We've done the bands. We've done the mode. Or should we say we've done the KC shift and we've done the mode. And now we've done the bands as well, because we're keeping this a banded version instead of just a straight through, considering the uh, it's already got a nice custom decal on the front. We put it all back together, give it an align, and there we have it. So this radio now goes mid-high, 10 metres, and the UK40 on the front switch with um, a wrap around on the um on the bands now it doesn't flicker like that in real life it's just the camera anyway hope you enjoyed this quick video don't forget to like share subscribe comment join facebook join patreon buy me coffee 
or look at my website microchips.net thanks for watching and we'll see you in the next video